obviously this last weekend you had a couple guys dealing with family back in the southeast area affected heavily by the hurricane Har uh, hurricane harvey and you yourself being from florida which is no stranger to tropical that. storms what could you say would be the best advice that maybe even if you hadn't given you would have to these guys that were going through a relatively new ordeal with this hurricane oh my goodness that, that I, I i'm not sure i could be of any uh, advice there that's that's called a disaster that's a natural disaster um, and there were so many components um, I've read uh, that you know they had an opportunity to send an evacuation to the city two days before, but they opted not to because what would that cause? If you were going to evacuate, have the whole city of Houston try to evacuate two days, that would have resulted in more deaths, right? Uh, so I think the city of Houston made a great decision there. It's just that sometimes nature, you know, we see how small we are. And, and you know, nature is ultimately uh, the power that be. And uh, we have to respect that, but there's nothing there. It's, it's so hard, what do you do, swim? I, I mean, what, what, I'm, what I'm proud of is I'm proud of teammates that I have here, former Bobcats, uh, Mike Arakpo, Brad Miller, that have taken it upon themselves to go down to Houston uh, and, and get in their boats and then go save lives. That's, that's what I'm proud to say. I know those guys personally, and they made the three hour trip down there and then called me, they, they, had, they saved people, and they did, and I'm really, really proud to call them friends uh, and, and alumni of Texas State. So. You know, there's nothing really I can say to advice I'd give. I'm just proud of the way that Texans and Louisianians, to that matter, mm -hmm. come together. And of course, James Sherman trying to get a whole relief fund in order right. for the organization and the Sun Belt. And now, obviously, you're going to be hosting a team from that area come Saturday. Right. How important will it be for y'all to come out with maybe a little extra edge now that Houston Baptist might be playing with a little more? of a personal drive following last weekend's events. Well, a two and ten season will give you plenty of edge. So I'm not I'm not worried about us picking up edge there. We've got plenty to recover from and we've got plenty of points to do right now. Now, you're a senior, got a lot of freshmen on this roster, 31%. This is your last official first day of school now that classes have officially <laughs> begun. Gonna, what'll be the most important advice that you can give these guys now that they're gonna be balancing a full workload in school and on the field for the first time? Right. I think the biggest thing is develop routines. Um, there's never enough time and, and things get pushed back. That's, that's the life of a Division I student athlete. Um, but develop routines, put your priorities first. And then one thing I would say is, is pay attention in class because a lot of times you don't have time to do homework uh, as much as the other students, or read the book as much as the other students do. It's just not possible. But if you can try, and what I do is absorb as much material I can in class, so I give myself the best chance to succeed in there as well. Now the news being released just, I think, yesterday or today that Saturday is set, y'all will be playing. How happy were you to finally hear that there will be a game to play on Saturday? Well, after we went to New Mexico State last year and got in the accident and played that game, there wasn't really any doubt we were going to play somewhere in my mind. That's about all I got for him. Coach talks about being anxious for the first game. Uh, is that anxiousness sitting with you? Does it kind of grow you know, as you get closer? Oh, I can't, I can't wait. Uh, you, some, some people don't understand. Uh, we, we've been at this since December 21st of last year. And so it, it's been eight months. Uh, and and we're, we're ready to go. Uh, we've, got, we've got a lot bottled up here that, that we're ready to get out and show the world and show us for ourselves that we got something here. So, yeah, I'm anxious. I'm excited. Uh, all, all those things. What are the fans going to see out of this team you know, when they take the field for the first time? They're, they're going to see they're gonna see our core values. They're going to see a disciplined, focused football team uh, that, that goes hard, 4-6, to six, A to B with an adequate effort focus. Uh, they're going to see uh, great tempo, hard hits. They're going to see lots of scoring and great defense. I, I mean, this is a program here. Uh, we, we didn't we didn't throw together a football team yesterday, so it's a program, and that's what our program's about. Everyone talks about that. Everyone on the team cares more about each other this year. Yeah. What a uh, how will that show you know, this season? Well, really, you know, and, and to be honest, you guys might not see it out there. You guys might not see it, but in the locker room, that's that's where it happens. In the practice field, when when fans aren't out there, when when you got a guy when when I when I do something wrong and take a bad step, and the third third tight end is like hey your step's wrong I'm like great awesome you know they pay one coach to be full-time here but I've got seven and, and and same to everyone else in my position group and, and all across the board so you got you guys may not see it out there except in the scoreboard you know that's, that's all I can tell you uh, you know we certainly do and, and this is things behind closed doors in meeting rooms and quiet moments where you know you got guys that do have faith.
or loved ones in distance. And so you put your arm around them, and you ask them how they're doing, and they tell you that the house is flooded, and they need to say, you know, fifty-five thousand dollars, but gone. Right? That's that's the care part, right? And it's not just saying, hey, man, I'm sorry that happened today. It's it's three weeks from now. Like, how are they doing? How are you doing three weeks into it? You know, because everyone wants to be there when it happens, and then there's a drop off. How is praises and camp going for the offense? It's awesome. Uh, we're we're moving the ball. We've got we've got so many talented players uh, and so much speed uh, that it's it's been fun. Those those guys outrunning me. Uh, so it's it's been fun. Um, and, and and really, especially the young guys, are so anxious to learn uh, about how how this stuff works, the little nuances of the game. Um, and for the old guys, it's it's how can we how can we perfect something that we're doing on a technique or a top end of a route or, or in line block. So it's, it's been a ton of fun. Um, so taking on a leadership role yet again for the second time, what do you do to try to lead the team? First of all, I have to take care of my 20 square feet. Okay, so the first thing I do, I think that's the biggest and the hardest thing to do when you move into a leadership role is you have to be so good at taking care of yours that you can focus on other people's. And so that's something that I've tried to develop before and in years past to take care of myself and so that I can go focus on other people. So that, that's the first step. Uh, the second step is caring, caring about them. Um, you know, uh, whether it's giving them rides or taking them to get their, their car fixed up or, or taking them out to eat or something like that when they need food, making them food. I'm not a good cook. Um, and, you know, it, it's, it's caring uh, enough to notice because if you open your eyes, sometimes you see a lot more than, than what's on the surface. And I think that's a big part is understanding where people are, where they want to go, and then trying to trying to uh, create a way for them to get there. That's what, that's what leading is, impacting people to where they want to go. And then, um, how are you approaching this week? And then, what's the goal for the season with you being a senior? Okay, well, uh, as far as my approach to the week, it was today, today, tomorrow will be tomorrow, Thursday will be Thursday, and Friday will be Friday. My classmates asked me, and during the season, like on a Tuesday in class, I'll be like, "Hey, you ready for you know whatever opponent we're playing?" And I'll tell them no, and and they'll look at me like this, and I'm like, "I'll be ready on Saturday though." And, you know, we have a plan, and, and every day is is crucial to that plan. So I, I don't feel good about going out to play on Saturday yet, but I will by Saturday. I'll be I'll be more than ready. Um, and, and so if we just have that mindset and then take it week to week, uh, then that, that confidence and momentum starts to come, and and, the, and then good things happen. She mentions the uh, start to the week. What's different about you know, this first week game week under Coach Withers' second year here compared to his first year? Here? Well, honestly, our Tuesday practice, <laughs> our Tuesday practice today was awesome. Uh, first of all, guys know kind of like what we're doing out here, what Tuesday is for. Last year, he taught us what Tuesday was for and what Wednesday was for on Thursday. Uh, and, and guys know, and we've led, and the young guys have followed, and we had a great day today. So we're going to come back and have a better day tomorrow, a better day on Thursday, awesome day on Friday, and then we're going to go out Saturday, and, and we're going to look good. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I'm happy with, with today. I'm not satisfied because that's why we're coming back tomorrow.